I'm Verto and this is the HVAC is in my channel. Today we're going to be talking about something very interesting which is manual S, equipment sizing for uh, units, all right? All right, so let's get into it. So to begin with, we need to remember that manual S is, um, I would say, it's a method of sizing residential unit based on ACA standards. So what we're going to put in here is manual S, the title, okay, manual S, and that's basically for equipment sizing, okay, equipment sizing, equipment sizing, okay, but as you can see, there are two types of equipment sizing. One is in the commercial side and the other one is in the residential side. So manual S is basically for residential purposes. So let's put in here residential, okay? For residential. So, and this is also based on ACA standards. ACA, A-C-C-A standards. Standards. It's a method, all right? So this is also a book. It's, 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 it's available online if you go to the website of ACCA and you're going to be able to find anything residential. You're going to have manual J, which is heat load calculations, manual S, which is equipment sizing, and manual D, which is duct design. So generally it comes... It comes in this order. I'm going to put this in pink because it's very important. It comes in J, which is the heat load calculation. Then after you do the heat load calculation, you're going to have manual S, which is equipment sizing. Once you size the equipment, then you're going to go for manual D, which is duct design. Okay, so you have manual J, S, and D. And in this video, we're doing manual S. Okay. So now let's continue with uh, this uh, topic, which is manual S. So as you can see on this side, we have the calculation already. So this has been done based on manual J and manual J is actually heat load calculation. So let's put in here just for the sake of this video, heat load calculation, heat load calculation. Calc. And how can you do a heat load calculation? There are different ways. So you can find, you, there are a lot of forms where you can fill in the data. That's number one. Number two, there are Excel sheets, which ACCA calls it speed sheets. Okay. But also, there are programs, and that's the most efficient way. So, the most common ones are WriteSoft. See? WriteSoft. If I write it right, <laughs> right? So, WriteSoft. And the other one is Elite. Elite. Uh, they also call it like RHVAC. Okay. And there's other ones. Uh, there are other ones, but I'm more familiar with WriteSoft and Elite. So in this video, we're checking on the WriteSoft calculation that it has been done. So before doing the manual S, a heat load calculation has been completed using the software WriteSoft, which is very popular and Elite. So in this case, it's WriteSoft. So from WriteSoft, what are our values? So what our values are the following. From our heat load for cooling, so I'm putting in here cooling, we obtained this following data. Sensible, latent, and total, okay? So we need to focus on the total. There we go. So we have the total heat gain. So the total heat gain in the envelope, including infiltration and everything, is 25,045 BTUs. Okay, that would be the load. Well, let's put load. Okay, but what load? Is it heating or cooling? This is heating. No, I'm just kidding. So this is the cooling load. We're talking about the total cooling load. So manual is for cooling load establishes the following, and I'm gonna put that in green, okay? So this is the whole video about manual S. For cooling, okay, cooling, 
manual is based on ACCA or ACA standards indicates the following, okay? It says the cooling load, the, the overcooling percentage has to be within 90% to 115%. Okay, so what does that mean, overcooling percentage? So in this video, let's check on this. So for example, if I have, uh, let's see, overcooling percentage, it's gonna be equal to the capacity, capacity divided by the load, divided by the load. Now the load, in this case, of course, is overcooling. OC is overcooling, the load means cooling load, okay? And the capacity comes from the equipment. Let, let's put in here equipment. And who's gonna give you the equipment? The manufacturer, okay? For example, if we have a Goodman, let's see a condenser, condenser coil, condenser slash coil, and it happens that this condenser slash coil is a Goodman GSX. You, so in order to obtain the capacity, you just need the model number. So GSX 14301, 301K. Okay, so this is a Goodman equipment, Goodman manufacturer. And if you go online, you're gonna be able to find the nominal capacity. So the nominal capacity, so the capacity if you go online, capacity says that this is a 2.5 ton unit. 2.5 ton unit, okay? 2.5 ton unit, okay? There you go. And so in this case then, the overcooling capacity, overcooling is gonna be equal to 2.5 ton unit. But before doing that, we need the following. What is 2.5 ton? 2.5 ton equals to the following. How much is one ton? One ton is 12,000 BTUs per hour. BTUs per hour. Therefore, if you do 2.5 ton, it's gonna be equal to the following. And you're gonna listen to my calculator, clicky, clicky. That's gonna be 30,000 BTUs, okay? So that's gonna be 30,000 BTUs per hour, per hour, okay? So in that case, we have this capacity, 2.5 ton. So since we have the heat load, the overcooling capacity is gonna be equal to the capacity, which is 30,000, divided by the load. Which load, cooling or heating? Cooling, because we're talking about cooling. And in cooling, you don't choose the sensible or latent, you choose the total, so that's gonna be 25, four, four, five. Let's put a comma in here just to make for the sake. So that's gonna be equal to the following. So that's gonna be equal to 30,000, one, two, three, divided by 25, four, four, five, and that's 117, 118. Okay, there we go, 180, 1.8. So in terms of percentage, this would be times 100, so that's 1,800. So that's the overcooling capacity. However, based on ACA standards, which is manual S, they indicate that this number, technically they don't explain in percentage form. They explain in decimal form. So in other words, they say the cooling capacity has to be 1.0.90 to 1.5. Fifteen oversizing factor, okay? But just to, 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 to manage this uh, sizing better, we use percentages. Okay, so they are equivalent. You can do this as an oversizing factor or you can do it as an overcooling percentage. So whichever works. So in this case, technically this is not this is not complying with ACA standards because they are saying that your load or your sizing has to be within 90% to 150, okay? But this is not complying, okay? But what would I use? What would I use if I was, uh, it, if this was a case, uh, uh, my case? So if it, so in this case, since 
2.5 ton is not working because it's more than 115%, then what we're going to do is go for the other option. So let's put this in red, for example, in red. So the other example would be to use two ton because the, the equipment comes in two ton, 1.5 ton. So the, the lower would be two ton. So two ton system equals two, two ton times 1200, that's 2400, okay? See, that's 24,000 BTUs per hour, okay? BTUs per hour. And the load is not gonna change. So the oversizing percentage is going to be equal to 24,000, which is the nominal capacity of the equipment divided by the load. The load is gonna be 25,445. So this is gonna give me a total of how much? 2400 divided by 25445. Okay, so this gives me 94%, okay? Of course, times 100, right? 94%. So technically, this is passing, okay? So this complies with manual S based on ACA standards. So now the questions, the question to, the, to everyone, to the audience is, which one would you choose? Option one or you would choose option two? Technically, would you put in your house a two-ton system or you would put in your house a 2.5-ton system? So the answer is the following. I personally rather size my equipment not considering the 90%. If, if I was going to do this, my percentage would be personally, I'm talking about personally, this personal 1.5% to 115 percent even 120 okay so this is undersized for me 94 percent which is lower than the even you can see here you see that your house is asking you you need 25,000 BTUs per hour but you're giving him less 24,000 okay so in this case this is lower Anything about 100 is good for me, 100. But for me, it's better to be a little bit more, a little bit more, have a buffer. Why am I saying have a buffer? Because this is, if you have 100% overcooling, you're saying that you're going to match this heat load. Where is the buffer? Are you telling me that the installer is going to install a with the correct correct standards and there's not going to be any mistake so usually there are some mistakes in installation for example sometimes the the flexible ducts are completely tied up there is poor airflow there is leaks in the duct work sometimes sometimes there's a frigid and load charge is not correct the subcooling is not correct sometimes um uh, we didn't brace or install with nitrogen, so that, that way we have inside the refrigerant some small particles, and then that's going to affect the TXB. So there are a number of factors. Because of those number of factors, that the efficiency of the system is going to decrease. Therefore, if you size it for 100%, you're not considering those factors, and then in summer, you're going to have issues. So it's better to be safe than sorry. That's why it's better to oversize it a little bit. See, it's 118%. So I would go for 118%, all right? So now, one, one last thing. Uh, this manual S, this part, see? The manual S says that you, you're gonna be sizing from 90% to 115%, but this is applicable for, and I'm gonna put this in red, I don't want to. I don't want to be to make this more complicated. So this is for single speed, okay? <coughs> single speed compressor, single speed compressor, speed compressor, okay? 
because th sometimes you have two speed compressor, which is multi speed. So in multi speed, you can go up to 120. Sometimes you have variable speed. In, in that case, you can go up to 130%. Okay, so that's the manual list. Uh, we're gonna make, we're gonna be making other videos uh, based on those. Uh, let's let's say uh, double speed compressor. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video and please share the video and subscribe and don't forget to hit the like button. That helps a lot. Okay. Thank you so much.